I've been using the 16 inch MacBook Pro for quite a while now, but I've recently switched to the M1 Mac Mini. Here's why. Welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you already have. Also, a quick shout out to anyone who has joined the Discord server. It's currently free to join. It's really buzzing actually. There's about 80 people in there now, people that are far smarter than me and people who have got lots of opinion on tech and lots of advice to give on Apple stuff and all sorts of business. So get involved. The link is in the description. So this is my beloved 16 inch MacBook Pro. I got it back in 2019. I was one of the first people to grab it as soon as I could. And I love it. I genuinely love this laptop. It's run everything in my business. It's done everything from managing this channel, producing video content, audio content, everything. It's just a, an absolute beast. I've never pushed it to its full potential at all. I will leave a link to my long-term review up here. It's definitely worth checking out if you're thinking about that machine at the moment. There is a Apple Silicon version on the way at some stage this year, we think. We don't know when, but if you need that 16-inch machine now, check out that review. It's still a great machine, don't get me wrong. However, it has been replaced possibly temporarily in this studio with a very important addition, which is the M1 Mac Mini. It all started when I got my hands on that M1 MacBook Air for the first time. I'll leave a link to the two week review I did up here. It is a stunning laptop. It has completely redefined the way that I think about Apple lap laptops and laptops in general, actually. And it got me thinking, what would my next M powered Mac be? I was gonna wait originally for the new iMac, but again, we don't know when that's coming. And then the more I looked into the M1 Mac Mini, the more interested I got. So I, I just couldn't wait any longer and I bought an M1 Mac Mini. And this is why it is replacing my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now the M1 MacBook Air that I've got is the base spec. It's eight gig of RAM, 256 gig hard drive, and it has that seven core GPU rather than the eight core GPU. But it's great, I've done video editing on it, it works fantastically. But I wanted to try an M1 computer that had A, a fan to stop any kind of throttling happening with the CPU, and two, 16 gig of RAM, just to see what the difference was. So I spec'd it up, and the Mini that I have has 16 gig of RAM, I've got the 512 gig hard drive, and in the UK that costs 1,099 pounds, including VAT, Again, not bad. Now obviously the Mac mini is just a box. You don't get a screen with it. You don't even get any peripherals with it either. You just get the box. So to that, I needed to add a monitor, mouse and keyboard. Now I opted for an MSI monitor, widescreen 34 inch monitor, which I'll come on to in a bit and a Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. Now, a lot of people have been asking about this keyboard in my other videos, and this is the keyboard that I'm pairing with the Mac Mini. It's a Keychron K2 wireless RGB colored keyboard, and it's fantastic. And I will leave a link in the description so that you can buy it, and there's a bit of a discount involved there as well. So I highly recommend this. But that entire setup, so the Mac Mini, the MSI monitor, the keyboard, the mouse, all of that together came in at around about 1,449 UK pounds. Now compare that with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, that cost me over three and a half thousand pounds. So can this Mac mini setup really compete with a very, very expensive 16 inch MacBook Pro? So firstly, I wanna see how far I can push that M1 chip. With the Air, I've pushed it fairly hard, so I've done some 4K video editing, a bit of music production, which I will at some stage make some videos on to show you how that performs, but I haven't really, really pushed it. And by that, I mean, I haven't used it day in, day out for intensive work. It's been more of a kind of email, writing, video calling machine. It, that's pretty much been the, the MacBook Air's role for me, and it works brilliantly in that, in that respect. However, the Mini, I am, really gonna push, it's gonna do everything. It's literally gonna be the machine I use all day, no matter what the task is. And I wanna see if it frustrates me at any point. That's the key thing. Will it get on my nerves by either crashing or beach balling a lot or just not being able to do the things that I want it to do quick enough? And what if it doesn't frustrate me? What does that mean? We've all seen the benchmarks, you know, we've seen that it has out benchmarked the base level Mac Pro in single core performance. Um, it even beats the 16 inch MacBook Pro in multi-core performance in certain benchmark tests. I, I don't care about benchmarks at all, but I wanna see if that actually means something in the real world. So 
will that mean that this thing will not frustrate me? Will it just work smoothly? And what does that mean based on the amount I spent on it versus the 16 inch MacBook Pro? I also, and I had done for a little while, I've wanted to enter the world of widescreen monitors like this MSI. And initial impressions, I'll do a full review of this monitor at some stage, but initial impressions are, amazing. Um, it doesn't have as much sharpness as the Retina screen that you get on the MacBook Pro or the, the iMac for example, but the width and just the amount of screen real estate you get is superb. And this isn't a reason to buy a Mac Mini, but it did afford me the ability to get this monitor and, and start using this form of, of screen. And let's not forget that overall price, if just the monitor and the, the Mac Mini together, they are so much cheaper than the equivalent 16 inch MacBook Pro. And they're still cheaper than the 5K iMac. So that combination, it's unbeatable price wise in the Mac universe. But make sure you subscribe, because like I say, I'll be doing more in-depth analysis on the benefit of these widescreen monitors. I've got lots of thoughts around that. But yeah, initial thoughts is that it's fantastic. And it's the Mac mini that has enabled me to get into this widescreen way of working. And lastly, I just wanna see if the Mac mini gives me an idea of where Apple Silicon is headed. I think at the moment we're in this place where we've had these initial batch of machines. They've been very well received by people like myself, some other reviewers and, and the big tech press. But where is it going next? And from my point of view, if this thing is effortless, I then start to question where the ceiling is for the performance that I need. We all have that, you know, that you get to a point where a computer is just too fast. You don't need all that power. iPads have been like this for a long time. So the iPads, you know, even the Air, for example, it's an incredibly powerful, performant tablet, but very, very few people use the amount of power that it has under the hood. So it's your ceiling within that iPad is actually quite low. But the other side of all of this, obviously, is if this is effortless, you know, this Mac Mini, which, the, you know, the, the base level Mac Mini starts at 699. It's ridiculously low cost in terms of an entry point for a very, very good Apple Mac. But if it is really that effortless and, and helps me do 4K video editing without any trouble, then it does point to a very exciting future with Apple Silicon. And you can't ignore that. I mean, that that's even if you're not into Macs, it's fascinating what Apple are going to do next. You know, we, we can expect more cores, probably higher levels of RAM, more ports, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it, that will be that will fascinate me uh, just to see how powerful this thing is. And will I miss the 16 inch? Yeah, if I'm honest, I miss it already. It's still here, as you can see. It's, I still use it very, very occasionally, but I do miss it a bit. And I think no matter how well this M1 Mac performs, I'm gonna miss that 16 inch. And it's an odd comparison anyway, to a degree, because this is a laptop, it's portable. The Mac mini isn't. You're not gonna walk into a coffee shop with a Mac mini and a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse, obviously. But the reason for this switch is purely from a desktop point of view. I would quite often use the, the 16 inch MacBook Pro on the desk. So for a long time, probably over a year actually, this was a desktop computer, basically. So in that respect, I kind of am comparing apples for apples. Sorry. That is the reason I'm doing this switch. Uh, I want to let you know what it's like in, in real world terms. I will return with an update, of course, and I will return very soon with a full first impressions of this Mac mini because a little bit of a spoiler, I'm amazed by what it can do. Now, if you're thinking of something slightly more portable, but you still want to try out the M1 chip, I really recommend checking out the M1 MacBook Air. So carry on watching for a link to my two week experience with that laptop. I think you'll find it incredibly interesting. And in the meantime, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Give the video a like if, you, if you've liked it. If you haven't, let me know why. And I will see you next time. Thank you.